Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go learn prayer. Father God, we're so excited and thrilled to be able to come to you today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege on to be able to fellowship your presence and hear your word. And Lord, we pray for our leaders of our nation. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, give them thanks. Be made for them authority over us. So Lord, we thank for our president, vice president, senators, and congressmen, legislators, Supreme Court judges, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the armed force, the FBI, and the CIA, DHS. Lord, we claim your salvation, deliverance, protection. They hearken unto you. We pray for all the nations of the world, that are, Lord, that every nation opens up their borders to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for a minor revival sweeping the world. And Lord, we pray for all those missionaries out there that continually preach Jesus Christ as Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs. And Lord, we pray for all the body of Christ, that each and every believer become baptized in the Holy Spirit, being taught about who they are in Christ, and going forth in this life, ruling and reign in Jesus' name. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that we will say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me honor to the Holy Ghost. Now pray, follow us, Lord. As we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of word and live by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's go over here to the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. And we read some scripture here. Now let's hear what the scripture says here, beginning. I want to pick up here in verse 16. Now it says here, the Lord said, Rejoice no more, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this will of God in Christ Jesus concern you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesy, prove all things, hold fast that was good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Now verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless the Lord Jesus Christ, to the coming Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who will also do it. Now, notice here in this verse 23, the scripture tells us here that about our spirit, soul, and body. We are spirit beings. We're created in the image of God. Remember, Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him in spirit and truth. Well, God created us in his image in the book of Genesis, mankind. And we're spirit beings. And we need to realize that when we came born again, our spirit man became brand new in Christ Jesus. Now, we have a mind, our soul, we have an intellect, you know, and we have a body. Now, what we're going to do with God's Word as believers is begin to renew our mind to God's Word and realize that our flesh and mind many times don't want to do what God told us to do from His Word and also be just being led by inward witness. Now, let's go back and read our book of Romans, please, and read here in Romans chapter 8. Now, the Scripture says here in verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God or children of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby I cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit beareth witness our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, this is how we live as believers. This is how we make decisions. First of all, by just doing what the Word says to do. Whatever the Word of God says to do, that's what we do. Like, forgive people, tithe, give, you know, pray, meditate on the Word, speaking God's Word. That's what the Scripture gives us of what to do. But also, when it comes to making decisions in life, where does God want us to live or anything like that? We want to wait on God till we know in our spirit where God wants us to be. The Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. Remember there in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Think about this. And Apostle Paul perceived in Acts chapter 27, verse 10, that this ship, uh, this uh, voyage be in much danger. And he was right. He'd heard from God. Well, now, what happens... As a believer, we need to learn to listen to our spirit man, the inward witness. And the, the Holy Spirit will guide us by that inward witness. In every decision we have to make, it's good that we just follow the witness. Do I have the witness to do this of the Holy Spirit in my heart or not? And the Bible said that we read there in First Thessalonians, prove all things. I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. That's the three-part being of a person. We are spirit beings. We live in the body. We have a soul, our mind, our emotions, intellects, our soul. Well, now what we need to do is learn to hear from God inside of our heart. What does the Lord want me to do? Usually, you don't know, we got born again. As soon as we get born again, um, we usually know about who we're supposed to give something to. I mean, most of us we've been to pick up on that. Maybe you're supposed to give a special offering, or you know, you've got something in your closet you're supposed to get. It may mean a whole lot to you, but you know, you're supposed to give this to so and so. Well, that's how we begin to follow God by the inward witness in situations like that. Now, the Holy Spirit will bear witness our, our spirit about things. And we need to learn to follow the, the witness of the Holy Spirit in our life. And it's going to take time for us to pray and wait on God to learn to follow the inward witness. 
Now, notice over here in 1 John, you're there in Romans, go all the way like you're going towards the book of Revelation. Now, look at 1 John here. In 1 John chapter 5, now verse 9, it says, We receive the witness, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which you testify of the Son. Now, verse 10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Now, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He bears witness our spirit about what we're supposed to do or not do. He doesn't condemn us, but he wants to lead us to this life. He, he wants to be our guide. That's why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us in all truth. And we need to learn to follow the inward witness. When it comes to making decisions in life, what, do I have the witness about doing this or not? Now, people don't understand that. You know, let's go over here to, uh, over here to the book of Corinthians. <clears throat> now, let's go over here. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now here's why. For they are foolish unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. We discern with our spirit. And we need to learn to listen to what the Lord wants us to do. He knows everything. He's our Lord, Jesus, once we receive him as our Lord and Savior. Then he wants to have us say so about what we do. He has a plan for our life, each one of us. And what we want to do is fulfill that plan. Now, the way we're going to do that is wait on God in prayer. Till we know in our heart, pray about a situation. Am I supposed to sell the house? Am I supposed to buy this house? I mean, all kinds of things. And it's either be the witness of men, but the witness of God is greater. People will tell you, oh, yeah, we're all going to go. You go with us. We want you to go with us, too. Well, that's great, you know, I guess. But we, do I have the witness about going? Now, if you told them you just didn't have the witness, you know, they may give you some persecution over it. Because if they're walking in the natural and are carnal, they're not going to understand why in the world you're not going to go. Why you're not going to invest. Why you're not going to do this. Well, you know, you usually can't explain it to them. You know, Nic Nicodemus said, you may go back to my mother's womb. And Jesus said, that was flesh is flesh, and that was your spirit is spirit. Marvel not that you must be born again. See, we're taught to trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to understanding. Thank God for our mind and our head. God gave them to us. But we don't make decisions based on that. Especially if we've got inward witness contrary to what our head wants to do, or our mind wants to do, or our will wants to do, or our flesh wants to do. No, we need to learn to monitor that and listen to what we've got in our heart. What does the Lord want me to do? And as we wait on God in prayer and stay in the Word, we'll be, be led by God in cessation life because we become more sensitive about listening to God and hearing from God about what He wants to do. So often Christians, even ministers, go off and do something that they didn't wait on God about. They didn't have the witness to do it. In fact, some people knew there, and later on, they said, oh, I knew I was supposed to go. Well, then, <laughs> why, why did you go? You know, we make mistakes in these areas, but we need to learn. Because it can save your life. It can also cost a person's life. By not knowing in their heart. By overriding what they got in their heart. Now, there'll be situations come. You know, I saw, and, you know, I've missed God before. But I saw people in Bible school quit Bible school. Yet, Supposedly, God had led them to come to Bible school. That was their testimony. Some of the things were real miraculous how God got them there. Yet, because of whatever came up, they decided they're going to quit. Now, that's what happens to people. They based it on how they were treated or didn't like the area they lived in or anything. This comes to them. Well, now, what does the Lord want me to do? See, we need to follow his plan. And we need to learn to listen to God. You know, one of my brothers... Um, he had this, uh, when, in his checking again, he's born again, spirit field, him and his wife. And when they bought their, when they got their checks at the bank, they, uh, banker, you know, they put their names on them, everything. Do you want any emblems on them or what color, you know? And he saw this cross, represent Jesus, saw this cross, they wanted that by their name. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put that cross in there too. So he'd get those checks, and you know, after a while he'd run through checks and got a reorder. So they, any changes? He said, you know, I'd always think about taking that cross off. But I just didn't, I didn't have it in my heart I could do it. I started it, and then 30 years go by, and I still got that on my checks. Sometimes I think next time I'm going to order, I'm not going to put that on there. Okay, so he retires from his company he works for, and he's looking at houses on a lake. Be like, you know, people that want a beach house, well, this would be on the lake. And so him and his wife started looking. Well, they found one they really liked. And it just, both of them seemingly liked it, and the family did, and it seemed okay to them and their heart about the Lord with it. Well, the realtor said, you need to put a deposit down. Well, now the place is beyond what they had for their budget, you know, what they plan on buying. So they gave this offer below 
what we like. And these are rare cottages, you know. So, you know, they, they come up like hotcakes. They take off. They're sold. But he gave them a lower price, a bid. Well, he said, you need to put that, you know, write out a deposit because we have so, you know, see, this is serious. So he gave me a check for a deposit. Well, they took it to this lady that owned the home, the realtor did. And I uh, said, you know, this is their offer. It was lower than what she wanted. And she was, you know, the realtors knew she's not going to take it. But nevertheless, the lady looked at the check. And she saw that cross, apparently. And she said, well, are these people Christians? She goes, yeah, yeah they're, they're real religious, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they are. And their family and the kids, yeah. She goes, um, you tell them I'm going to take it. I'm going to Christian have this home. Now, over the, all the, all, like 30 years, every time he ordered checks, he thought, ah, I'm going to take that cross off. But he couldn't get the witness in his heart about doing it. Now, that God used that in all that time. I mean, with God, there's no time. All those years, you know, just bearing witness to him, you leave it on there. And, it, you know, God used that to get him into that dream cottage. And that place is spectacular. But anyway, you see, the, how this all happened? Just by going what he had in his heart. His head said, ah, oh, we don't need to put that on anymore. I'll just take it off. But he said, uh, leave it on. That's how we make decisions. We'll just know something. Now, it doesn't make any sense to us because our mind's not born again. God will just give us an inner witness about something and really doesn't explain it to us. But he's training us and teaching us to go by inner witness. And again, you don't want to quit something unless you know you got the witness on it. Maybe you're not like, way, you know, whatever's going on. That's not how we make decisions as believers. We make decisions, what does the Lord want me to do? Because in there, there's a blessing man, we can't see. And there's a reason why he would keep us in some place or have us move out of some place. Maybe some place we really liked, but the Lord let us go and do something. Now, that's how Jesus is following God, and that's how we're to follow God. We're not following voices, and thank God for prophecies, but we're led by an inward witness. Do I have the witness in our God? Now, as we pray and we wait on God, we should begin to sense in our heart about what he wants to do about this situation. And we read there in the first Thessalonians, <clears throat> to prove all things. Prove it out, and you'll least you'll know. You know, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to go. It could be anything, you know, in life. Maybe you're planning on going on vacation or a trip or a voyage, you know, cruise. But you just said, you bought the tickets, but you know, I'm not supposed to go. It's not because of fear. You know, you can believe God for protection, but you just, you just know it's not God's will for you to go on this or right now go on this. You know, that, so why? We didn't go. No big deal. But can people make it a big deal out of it? Because they, they may be embarrassed. Maybe other people found out about it. Why didn't you go on your cruise? I thought he was going to go on vacation. Well, usually we can't say anything to them about it. We hear it from God. We're not supposed to go. They wouldn't understand it anyway. But we just say, say well, we didn't go. Or I didn't go. Now, that, that doesn't go over well, people, in many instances. And they'll really try to put the full court press on you, put a guilt trip on. Why didn't you go? You said you were going to go. Well, so what we should have said to begin with, well, let me pray about it. Or let me think about it. I'll see about where I'm going to go. But sometimes we committed to something we should have never committed to. And now we've got to believe God to get out of the situation. But many mistakes were made in life as a believer didn't listen to what they had in their heart. I know I missed God before. I don't want to do that anymore. But the problem is, is you know, he'll, he'll lead us and guide us by the inward witness. And we read there in 1 John, there's the witness of men and there's the witness of God. The witness of God is greater. That's what we follow. It's not what men tell us to do, but what do we have in our heart. And thank God we can submit to one another, and we should. But the point is that what does the Lord want me to do? He has a plan for our life. I, that's, was, I mean, that's the most important thing to me when I got born again. I don't know about you, but I want to find out what God wanted me to do. What does God want me to do? And then when I, the Lord did let me know he called me to preach and everything, well, then I want to find out where he wanted me to go. See, that was important to me. Find out. Because I saw people didn't wait on God. Find out about where to go. No, we need to know. So therefore, if we hear from God and we follow through with that, then when things maybe seem like not going right, we can think, well, you know, at least I heard from God. I know I'm supposed to be here. So I got that off the table. Now I can deal with the other stuff that I'm, that I'm faced with. But not being sure, that's not good. We need to know in our heart, this is what God wants me to do or not. And we can't just, you know, it's better to obey God and do what he wants us to do. He's trying to protect us. So the Holy Spirit dwells in each believer. Why? Well, one reason he's in our heart is to lead us and guide us. 
about what we're supposed to do, about making decisions. You just know, maybe you're getting ready to buy a television set and you've been looking at it. Maybe you looked online and you got the witness to get this one. So you follow through with it. Maybe you're getting ready to buy a car, but you didn't have the witness. The closer you got to it, the new, you just knew you weren't supposed to buy this. How is that? Well, how'd you know this? You had this in your heart. I know I've been in situations like that. They're not easy, not easy to get through. I mean, it can be embarrassing and people don't understand you. They're going to make fun of you and talk about you and talk about how bad you are and everything. You got to go through all that. Well, hey, you're not just part of suffering through persecution. But nevertheless, it's not like you're, you're not trying to please people. It's the idea is better to obey God first. And that's going to help them out in the long run if, if you and I keep obeying God and follow what the Lord led us to do. But people retire and quit jobs and get married and everything else and never, pl never seek the Lord about what to do. Just make their own decision. They already had their mind made up. And you ask people, did you pray about it? Well, no. Did you talk to the Lord about doing that? Mm, no. You probably, probably think maybe you should, you should. You should maybe wait on God, see about what he wants to do. Because that's it. God knows the future. You and I don't. We'd like to think we do, but we don't. So what we want to do is be at the right place, the right time, led by your witness. That's why Jesus, you see him being so successful. He knew what disciples to pick. He knew Judas was going to betray him. He knew he, Jesus knew that he was supposed to go out in the wilderness. He's out there for 40 days and 40 nights. Why was he out there? Because the Bible said the Holy Spirit led him to go there. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, and Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, and Jesus knew by an inward witness that somebody touched him. The disciples said, Thou see small thing, throng thing, say thou who touched me. He picked up on this. Paul perceived this voyage would be much harm. In Acts 27, verse 10, he perceived and was grieved in his spirit. In Acts chapter 16, beginning verse 16, about this woman who was following him around, saying, These men and, uh, and, and Silas, these men and servants, most thy God, which shows the way of salvation. Now, what she said was true. But she's got this demon in her that's telling people's fortunes. And Paul picked up on that. Now, what, what does it say? He was grieved. Paul was grieved. Didn't say we were, it said he was. Now, you, you'll pick up. Now, just because someone else doesn't pick up on it doesn't mean you can go ahead and go do it. What do you have in your heart about a believer? As a believer, what, what, do you have the witness? That's what comes down to it. We, you know, we have the witness. Remember one time this minister, he sent a, a bunch of uh, books overseas, Christian books, faith books. <clears throat> and uh, somebody said to him, well, why didn't you just send Bibles? Why did you send those books? Well, he said, first of all, we had the witness to send these books. That's why we did it. And God raises up teachers and ministers to teach God's word. You know, so God gave us apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors to teach the word. And those books were the ministry teaching. But the first reason we sent them is because we had the witness. Now, see, the other purpose thought, that would be better just send Bibles. See, that sounds a logical thing to do. I mean, who doesn't send out Bibles? Who doesn't give away Bibles? Of course. Every Christian wants to do that. But no, they had to witness, print a bunch of these books, pay for it, send them overseas. That's what they came to them. Well, someone else may have the witness to send Bibles over. Good. But often people do things that seem good, look good, but they didn't have the witness on it. Lord, is this what you want me to do? I want to do what you want me to do. And how are we going to know this? Waiting on God? Listen to our heart? Now, our mind says one thing, our flesh may say another thing, our will may say something else, but we need to learn to follow that inner witness. What does the Lord want me to do? How's God going to guide us through life? By the inward witness. We put the word first, and if the Holy Spirit tells us to do something, it won't contradict the word, especially the new covenant, and the Holy Spirit will begin to let, lead us. If we'll oper cooperate with him and operate with him, we can learn to go by what we have in our spirit. But many times people sell their house, you know, buy a boat or anything. But they didn't have the witness of it. They just did it because they wanted to do it. And when you live your whole life doing things just what you want to do, you'll miss out on doing what God wants you to do. He'll let you do whatever you want to do. I mean, we've all proved that out. He'll let you sin. But that's not his will. Now, we could submit, like Jesus said, I came down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him sent me. Now, that was crucial to me when I got born again. I wanted to find out what the Lord wanted me to do. Does he want me to still work where I'm working at? It was a great job. I mean, it had its moments, but, you know, hey, praise God for it. But then later on, he let me know he wanted me to go to Bible school in my heart. And, you know, I had that direction. 
then one door will begin to open, another door will begin to shut, and you'll begin to learn to train yourself to be led by your inner witness. Now, we all can hear from God, it seems like in giving, you know, suddenly we know we're supposed to give somebody something. And then we just have this in our heart, you know, that this is what I'm supposed to do. I was at this hotel. And uh, so I went to the front desk, a meeting, it, it, we're doing a meeting there, and I went to the front desk. And as I set, checked with, talked to the man there at the front desk, that he was like the manager of the whole place. I guess you call him general manager. And so he said something about my suit. I held on, he complimented. Now when he said that, I had in my heart, give him your suit. Now I don't know, you know, he's behind the counter, so all you're seeing is about this much above him. Not that I haven't seen him full body before, but so I went back and I got, I got to start my meeting just a little bit. I got to go preach. So I ran back to the room, took off that suit, put on another suit, came, you know, put this all hanger, put on a hanger and everything and pants and a coat and everything. And I said, here, and I gave it to him. Man, I tell you, 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 you <laughs> this guy, it was just worth watching him go nuts over a suit, but I got to get going. I got to start my meeting. Well, now that's, that just came to me there. Then another time I was in a hotel and I, I just got this tie. This tie was like, whoa, incredible. I mean, this has got Neiman Marcus on it and all over it. And so I went to the, to the front desk of the hotel, and some guy walks up to me and says, hey, I want your tie. And I thought, well, you know, you're thinking the world, like, good luck on that. And so as I walked away, I had this in my heart, give him that tie. So I went back, to, you know, I went, I went to my meeting room. And, you know, took the tie off and had this, it came with this real, it looked like a cough in a box it came with. So I got that, put that in there and came back. To, I don't even know the person. He was still in the lobby and got back and, you know, and gave it to him. Now, one, t one was against my will. And I didn't really want to do it at the tie. Suit, no problem. You see, that's how we learn these things. That, just little things like that. So it does. The Lord will speak to us about giving. And many times it may not be something we want to do, but we know in our heart we're supposed to do it. Other times it be something we want to do, and we still know in our heart we're supposed to do it. And sometimes we sense our heart, just leave this alone. Now that's how you and I learn, to follow God. And we need to learn to follow God. Because many dear Christians, bless their hearts, never really learn to be led by your witness. It's so important. For each believer to know who they are in Christ Jesus, use the authority of the believer, and to be led by your witness. To be at the right place, the right time. And believe God for divine protection, of course. But he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of my Almighty. The Lord will lead us into greener pastures. He's our Lord. He wants to lead us and guide us. Not by voices, but by inward witness. Well, do I have the witness? See, we read there in 1 John, there's the witness of men and there's the witness of God. Now, what does God want me to do? That's what I need to find out. And that's where that's my responsibility as a believer to find out what God wants me to do. First of all, just keep doing the word. Whatever the word is, like tithing. We tithe and give and forgive people and walk in love because the word tells us to. We worship God, thank God, because the word tells us to. But those situations, the Bible's not specific about, like it doesn't tell us where to live or what job to take or what to do. I mean, how am I going to find out if to be a preacher? Well, waiting on God in prayer, seeking God. And he'll begin to lead us and guide us. But it starts out many times just with small things that seem to be, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why should I give someone like this that? They don't need it. They got more than I do. It doesn't make a difference. What they have, what they don't have, do I have the witness on it? And again, you start heading some direction and you realize, yeah, I don't have the witness on this. This is, I uh, just sense. It's not because of fear. It's just, you know, in your heart, you're not supposed to go now. Or maybe you never get to go. There's a lot of things I can do in life, but what does the Lord want me to do? There's a lot of places to go preach, but where does the Lord want me at? This is where it's our responsibility as ministers, preachers, Christians, born-again people to find out what does the Lord want me to do. It's just making decisions based on what we want to do and not check in with him. So often we, need, we miss God. And he's there and plus can protect us from anything bad happening. We just know, you know, I wasn't supposed to go. That doesn't mean the plane was going to crash and burn or anything. It just simply means, well, I wasn't supposed to go on a trip. And as we learn to submit ourselves to God and learn to follow him, we're witness. And it's so important for all of us. I don't know if they ain't more important than to follow God in life, to do what he wants us to do. Like that minister said, they, they said, that minister, why'd you send those books over? Well, first of all, we had the witness. <laughs> I said, that's the best answer you can get there. First of all, we had the witness. You know, I'm sure he could have sent Bibles. You know, he, 
very prosperous, but you get these printed and send these over. Well, praise God. Well, that's how we do that. Jesus said, go to town, you find a man, the colt. That's, that's for me. And they did. Praise God. There'll be a man at the pitcher. But there'll be an upper room. This, this is knowing in our heart about what God wants to do. Not floating around and being dizzy or anything like that, but being solid about what to do in life. And learn to listen to God and follow him. And don't judge other people because they miss God. Leave that alone. Just take full responsibility for yourself that you hear from God. And your prayer life, praying in tongues is going to be very helpful in this area. Because it's, it's the Holy Spirit helping you pray. Giving you a language. Giving you a, helping you pray this prayer that you don't even know what you're praying about maybe. But you know it keeps you build up. Because Jude said when you pray in the Spirit, you build up your most holy faith. Praying the Holy Ghost. One translation said in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 and 14, that you see, speak divine secrets. So God gave us a way to pray to him that our mind understand what we're saying, but at the same time, we're praying things through. Praying things out that need to be prayed about. We learn a lot through waiting on God in prayer. If nothing else, we learn what we can't do, or what we're not supposed to do. Now, God gave us the will, we can do whatever we want to do. But what does the Lord want me to do? Well, then we need to follow that, that inward witness. And so that's why you hear people say sometimes, I just knew I wasn't supposed to go. Well, wh why did you go then? Well, the same reason you and I did what we did was wrong. No, as believers, we need to learn to go by that inner witness. Do I have the witness about this? The Holy Spirit will bear witness in our heart about what to do or what not to do. Again, we have a choice. We can do it on our own. God's not going to make us do anything. But it's important for us to learn to wait on God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He saved us, delivered us, redeemed us. And Lord, I pray for each of your person watching. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that each one of them are led by the inward witness. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord? Maybe you're not sure. Or maybe you know you've never done it. Today's your day to receive Jesus Christ, the Lord. The Bible tells us how to. We have John 3, 16. That God saw the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that who shall believe him shall not perish for a lasting life. That means not go to hell, but go to heaven when they die. Now, how are we going to know how are we going to receive Jesus? The Bible tells us here in Romans and other places in the epistle letters, but Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13. I want to read these scriptures. If you're not sure if you're saved or not, or you know you haven't been, let's receive Jesus today. And I'll pray a prayer with me. I want you to pray a prayer with me to receive Jesus after read these scriptures, okay? Now, the Bible says here that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, you'll believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, and the mouth of faith shall be made salvation, salvation. Now, verse 13 says, For whosoever called the name Lord shall be saved. So let's pray and receive Jesus now, okay? Pray these words after me, mean it, and be willing to do it, and you'll receive Jesus Christ the Lord. God, I come to you today to say this God, I come today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God, you raised the dead, he's alive today. Jesus, I receive as my Lord and Savior right now. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you that your blood has cleansed me from all sins. And thank you, Jesus, for protecting me that I'll never go to hell. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You pray the prayer? Good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You can email me at jesserichministries.com. If you got a prayer request, you're going to close that. It's scriptural. I'll stand with you. Also, if you just received the Lord, as far as that goes anyone else, you know, I want you to start reading the Gospel of John. And that's, that's going to show you what Jesus did when he said on this earth. Find a church to go to. You know, some areas are not open. But find a church to go to that preaches Jesus on the way to heaven. That church and pastor is going to help you grow to help spiritually. And help that ministry out that's feeding you on God's word, that church or minister. Help them out. They're going to need your tithes and offerings, your support to help. And they may not tell you that, but they will. So be a blessing to that work that's helping you grow spiritually and develop in the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, you get on our call in tonight, church on the phone, um, at 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code should be right on our Facebook page. So thank God we're able to do this. I mean, it's way we have, we can have church right now. So take advantage of that. Plus, we have communion during that time. So prepare for that. Till next time, it's Brother Rich. I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.